There are different patterns you can use when laying a tile floor. Now we're going to use a simple stacked pattern using 12 inch square tiles. If you'd like something different for your floor, we carry many different sizes, types, and designs of tile at Lowe's. Now if you're not confident installing a tile floor, see a Lowe's associate. We install many types of flooring. Always follow local building codes and read all the manufacturer's instructions. Also make sure the subfloor is uniform, level, the right thickness, and in good condition. An associate can help you with anything you might need to repair your subfloor. Now if you remember from the previous video, we marked reference lines on the backer board to help us lay the tile square to the room. We'll start laying our tiles in the center of the room and work out. That way the full tiles will be in the center and the cut tiles will be along the edge. We're almost ready to lay the tile, but before we do, we'll pull some of the tiles out of the boxes and mix them with different packages, just in case there might be a color difference between the boxes. We'll set our tiles in thin set mortar. We'll mix it in a bucket to the recommended consistency. Then, starting at the cross section in the middle of the room, spread the thin set with a trowel. Work within a three foot section at a time and try not to cover your reference lines. Once the thin set mortar is down, comb over it with the notched side of the trowel at a 45 degree angle. Comb it in one direction without making swirl patterns to ensure uniform application. Remove any excess with the trowel and place it back in the bucket. Now lay out your tiles along your reference lines. Just slightly press and twist and use spacers between the tiles. Keep laying the tile. Periodically lift one to make sure the mortar is sticking. Where it isn't, you can apply additional thin set to the back of the tile. If you're not getting good adhesion, use a trowel with larger notches. Any mortar on the face of the tiles can be wiped away with a damp sponge. Once a few of your tiles are set, check for any high spots using a level. Even them out using a rubber mallet. Then keep checking as you cover the room. Continue laying the tile in three foot sections. As you can see, we're going to have to cut the tile along the cabinets and walls. For small straight cuts, you can use a tile cutter. But for this larger job, a tile saw is easier and faster. Along the carpet, we're installing a tile edging strip. We spread a little thin set, set the strip in the mortar, then cut the tile to fit. Okay, all the tiles been set. Now we let the thin set mortar dry for at least 24 hours. The next step is to grout the joints. Mix the grout following the manufacturer's instructions, making sure you have the right water to mix ratio. Usually, the instructions call for a paste-like consistency. Apply the grout with a rubber grout float pressing the grout into the joints. Then run diagonally across the joints, removing as much excess as possible. After 20 minutes, wipe the grout lines in a circular motion with a sponge and clean water. Any residue that remains can be removed with grout haze remover. After you finish with the grout, avoid heavy traffic for 72 hours. It'll take about three weeks for the grout to cure completely. Then apply a grout sealer to the joints. The last step is to attach any trim work or transition strips. This kitchen had a plain floor without much character, but after adding floor tile, we've updated the look and given the homeowners a durable floor. If you want